The YouTube team keep it clean. What is going on? It's Engraven here with another video and I tried to warn people. I just did not see Jarvis Landry going to the Ravens. Every single time, add him to the list. Add him to the list. Every single time this offseason, the Ravens have expressed public interest in a player. Every single time that player goes somewhere else. Now, I'm happy for the Saints now because y'all know we got love for the Saints. The Saints got like some of the best fans in the world. So shout out to the Saints. We're going to talk about y'all in a minute. Give me a second. But for Ravens fans, I kept saying I just do not see it happening. I don't see it happening. It makes sense. It's a move that makes sense. But again, the public interest, man. When, when it was first reported that the Ravens were interested in Jarvis Landry, I didn't get hyped. I didn't get excited because I, I just felt like we done been down this road as Ravens fans too long this offseason. Ravens were publicly interested in Tyron Matthew. They were publicly interested uh, in Melvin Gordon. They were publicly interested in Bobby Wagner. They were pub publicly interested... <laughs> And Jarvis Landry and all of those players, they end up going elsewhere. And Zadarius Smith, that's a whole nother story. But uh, so many times it just continued to seem like the Ravens were being used as leverage. Like the Ravens were just being used. So whatever particular player that they were interested in, they could end up going somewhere else. But shout out to New Orleans. Now, I wonder, before we get into what Jarvis Landry can bring to New Orleans, I wonder... If this means anything for Michael Thomas. Because while I'm not expecting Jarvis Landry to get some massive deal, we've been seeing this offseason how teams, they'll get a receiver, but they'll, they, even if a team has stacked their receiver, they'll add more, but then they'll subtract and, and give somebody away. So I wonder, because the Saints just drafted um, Chris Olave in the first round. They drafted him in the first round. You still got Michael Thomas. They re-signed um, uh, Traquan Smith. They re-signed him. And now you're bringing on Jarvis Landry? Ooh, I don't know. Boy. I mean, I hope Michael Thomas doesn't leave. But at the same time, would Michael Thomas be traded now? I don't know. I don't know. Just something to think about. The way that I feel, hey, if for Jameis, Jameis Winston, that's going to be your guy, obviously. The more weapons, the merrier. The more, the merrier. That would be a beautiful thing. To, for him to have even more weapons But the way that this NFL is The way today's NFL is I don't know man I don't know So we're going to be seeing very very soon um, But anyway Because that, that, that question That question will definitely be answered very fast um, So to, to the Saints <laughs> Let's talk about the Saints we, we talk about the Ravens this whole time cause <laughs> Ooh Saints Saints they get some From LSU too First, they, they just signed a Honey Badge a couple weeks ago, and now they're signing Jarvis. They're signing all these LSU products. So they're going to fit right in. They're going to fit right in. The culture, the vibe, the energy, oh, it's going to be there. But what does Jarvis Landry give the New Orleans Saints? Um, he gives them a leader. And when you talk about football, you can talk about how fast somebody is. You can talk about how tall somebody is, how great their hands are, how great their blocking is, how great of a tackler they are, how big of a hitter they are, run blocking, pass blocking, intercept, all that. You can talk about all that stuff. But leadership is something that is extremely valuable, and it makes such a big difference. And me, like speaking as a Ravens fan, I didn't really appreciate leadership on a team until Ray Lewis left. Ray Lewis left, Ed Reed left. That's when I, well, Ed Reed kind of got kicked out. But anyway, when they left, uh, that's when I really appreciated leadership because before it just like came second nature. I'm like, oh yeah, we got leaders on the team, da 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 They straight, I took it for granted as a fan. But once that's gone, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What happened to this team? And then it helps a lot when leaders got talent too. So Jarvis Landry brings leadership uh, but he also brings talent as well. Um, Jarvis Landry is perfect word to describe him as a wide receiver, a grinder, a grinder. Um, he is not afraid to get the gritty yards. He ain't afraid to go across the middle. Um, he's a, a, a short and immediate type of threat. Um, he is a just a strong yak guy. He ain't going to be shaking nobody, but 
he um is a solid route runner with good hands. Um, and just he he gonna give it to you. He gonna give his his, his all on the field, man. He gonna give you his all, and he's gonna be somebody. We've seen so many sound bites. He's gonna be somebody that holds everybody accountable, holds everybody accountable. Um, so that will go well for your receiver room. You just brought in Chris Olave. You just brought him in. You just drafted him. He's a rookie, fresh. So now you have multiple guys. You got Michael Thomas too, but I feel like with Jarvis Landry, he's more of a leader probably than Michael Thomas. Um, and that's not a shot at Michael Thomas at all, but that's just what it is. So you have guys in place to where these guys can help your young receiver, put him in position to succeed. Tell him the ins, the outs, A, hey, this is how you make it in this league. This is what you do. This is what you shouldn't do. But also some guys that got, they got careers to back it up. Like Jarvis Landry ain't no bum. Michael Thomas ain't no bum. Like these guys, these guys can play. Like, cause if they, if, if there was a receiver that was like, I don't want to say sorry, cause none of these NFL players are sorry. But if there was a receiver who was trying to give like Chris Olave tips and whatnot, and that receiver like really hadn't done much. They hadn't made it to the NFL, granted, but they hadn't really done much. Chris Olave could be looking at him like, mm, what, 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 what am I supposed to learn from him? But now you got, you got all that knowledge in the room to learn from and to grow from. And you have like different levels of it too. Because you have a Michael Thomas and a uh, Jarvis Landry. They both have gotten the big contracts already. And then you got Traquan Smith. He hasn't got a big contract, but he's got the, uh, the, the sort of mid-level contracts or lower mid-level contracts. And he's been hanging around it. And he's been an impact player for those Saints. Especially when, uh, when Drew Brees was there. So you got some guys that know how to make it in the league. So that'll be uh, a, a, an A-plus uh, for him. Um, so, yeah, this is just, oof, this is, what a Friday, man. What a Friday. I'm still wondering about Michael Thomas, though. Still wondering about it. <laughs> I wonder if it's like, hey, because we've seen this over the years with so many different teams, man. At different positions, just when you think, oh man, this team is about to have a plethora of this position. Oh man, they got so many of this X position. They got so many Y position. They got so many A, B, C position. And then they're like, oh, nope, we're actually getting rid of this guy. So that's why I'm still just wondering about Michael Thomas. Uh, but Jarvis Landry, he was with the Dolphins, spent some time there, did his thing. Uh, then he went to the Browns, spent some time there, did his thing. Um, and he was a big part of the Browns really turning stuff around. Because we know the Browns, they were the laughing stock of the NFL for a long time. And I mean, some people feel like they still are. Um, but he did a big part in just really changing the culture there. Really changing the culture. Um, so he was huge in that. Now with New Orleans, they're definitely not a laughing stock. But New Orleans is sort of in this weird spot right now. To where, you know, they love Jameis Winston. Love Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston, just, they just be vibing, man. Always love and appreciate his energy. But then this weird spot right now, like, all right, is Jameis Winston going to be the guy? He's, he's going to have an opportunity. Uh, or are we going to have to look elsewhere? So um, this is a big year for Jameis Winston. I think they signed him to a, I want to say it was a two-year deal. I think it was a two-year deal. And hopefully he can stay healthy. Because last year sucked when he tore, uh, what was it, his ACLs, Achilles, either one. Um... But, yeah, hopefully that, that'll be all squeaky clean. He can come back, um, and he can be better than ever uh, for New Orleans. Should be a fun Monday night football game, New Orleans versus Baltimore uh, in New Orleans. Oof. Oh, the temptation to go to that game, it's there. The temptation is all there, man. Um, but, hey, we, we, we'll see how everything uh, works itself out. Uh, but, anyway, congrats to the Saints, Ravens fans. I tried. I tried to I tried to tell y'all, man. I tried to tell y'all, but it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We'll get through it, right? We always do, right? But yeah, happy for New Orleans. Jarvis Landry gets to go back home. Anyway, team keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all so much. We out.